What's going on guys? Welcome along to another video. I'm Matt over at DSR and today I'm at Riders taking out this Ducati Panigale V2 in this lovely white trim with the old red wheels. I've taken out the Panigale V4 and that thing was super aggressive, super uncomfortable, extremely powerful as expected, but it also got very hot. So the question is, is the baby brother, the V2, just as uncomfortable as the V4? Or is it just that little bit better as a road bike? Well, let's find out. Let's start off at the engine then. This has got Ducati's L-Twin Super Quadro engine. And this V2 is different to the V4. Where Ducati have made the engine smaller uh, and thinner, which means the whole profile of this bike is just a little bit skinnier than the bigger brother. This bike has got 955C, producing 155 brake horsepower and 104 newton meters of torque. And looking at the previous Panigale 959, this bike is up five brake horsepower and two or three newton meters of torque. So some good, good extra numbers there from the previous 959 model. Stock exhaust, it's definitely got a nice grunt to it. A nice growl when you start getting on the throttle. But just like the V4, this has a really aggressive riding style. The clip-ons are under the top yoke, which means they're a little bit lower. The pegs are really high. And me, I'm 6'1", 115 kilos. I've also got a day sack on. This is not a comfortable bike. If you're younger, and skinnier, or you're shorter, you might find this bike fits you nicely. But for me, I just feel too big. I am just kind of perched on top of the seat and, uh, and leaning forward a lot. Ducati have redesigned this seat and give it uh, an extra five mil of thickness. Whether that passes down to its comfort, I don't know. We'll have to see as we go on, on on this ride. Let's have a look at some electronics on this bike then. Ducati have brought down the look from the big brother, the V4. That very Ducati S front end. And they've whacked it on this. And I think it looks lovely. We got some beautiful daytime runner lights and the headlights are all just tucked away, sunken in, just gives it a very aggressive look to that front front end. Moving back from that then, we've got this tiny 4.3 inch TFT. It's okay, it is pretty small. We've got quick shifter up and down, which so far is working fine. We'll see what it's like when we get out onto the uh, the open bit. And uh, cause sometimes you'll find quick shifters work nicely when you're going slower. And then when you're getting on it full throttle, there's a bit of a lag. So we'll have a look. See how the quick shifter in this handles. We have three different rider modes, street, sport, and race. And that is it. There's no rain on this. But what you can do is you can uh, go in using the TFT, you can go into the settings of those and adjust those parameters, adjust the traction control, uh, the engine braking, the wheelie control. So you can fine tune one of them, probably street, and make that more of a rain orientated uh, mode just to kind of help yourself out if you do get caught in the wet stuff and that's about it for electronics on the v2 there ain't much so Ducati claim they have uh, rooted the exhaust so it goes under the engine we'll have a look later when we pull over but my right leg is starting to get hot already slow speed handling and wind protection 30 40 miles an hour we do have a quite severe kind of double bubble style windscreen at the front uh, and at these temperatures uh, temperatures at these speeds you can't really feel any wind coming coming from the front and handling is a little bit labored it does go kind of once it gets past that that 10 to 20 percent it then kind of like just drops in but uh, yeah, it's a little bit labored for the initial part you definitely have to do a bit of counter steering the V2 is going to have three different colour options. We've got red, white and black. And I think they all look bloody lovely. The price ranges vary ever so slightly. 
between the three colours. So we have the red, which is going to come in at £16,951. We've got this white, which is going to be 17251 And then you've got black, which is 17261 So it's kind of uh, take your pick which colour you like best. There is a little bit of difference. I mean, do you get the Panigale in red because that's just your traditional Ducati colours? It looks nice in this white, but I think I'd pick between the red and the black if it was me. I am struggling to get my feet on the pegs, or should I say my toes on the pegs. I can get the centre of my foot on the pegs okay, but getting the toes up, it's, it's a real struggle. And then it's a struggle to keep them there. So I'd be riding duck footed most of the time if I own this bike. So far on these back rows, the suspension is handling it pretty nicely. We do have 43mm Showa forks at the front. Uh, front and rear are all fully adjustable. And then the next main thing, the brakes. The rear is all right, it's a single 245mm disc with the Brembo caliper. The front is where most of the braking power is coming from. You've got two 320s up front with Oshia Brembos as well. Have a little bit of fun. So yeah, I can confirm definitely heat coming on the right hand side. What I found back there in the uh, the faster twisty section is as soon as I started getting up to speed is the wind was just kind of coming straight over this it wasn't getting blown up over my head so I was getting a lot of wind actually on my chest and up which is surprising because like I said there is a massive curvature on this uh, front screen maybe because I'm twice the size of this front end as in the screen section hey it's easy to have fun, it's easy to go fast, it's smooth, the quick shifter is nice. The engine, even say, even the stock exhaust sounds really nice on this. Got nice that deep, deep grunty gurgle to it. Ugh, giggle. Giggle. Giggle McDiggle. But for me, once again, some of the biggest problematic areas with the Ducati it is the heat coming from it. And then the other part is the ride in position like i said very lent over i'm starting to get achy wrists already i'm trying to do the old thing of uh resting one hand at a time unfortunately this bike doesn't have cruise control so i can't rest the right hand too easily when you do start getting this bike moving and even when you're stationary it's like sat between your legs it doesn't feel heavy uh, we have a weight of 200 kilos isn't too bad it's not the heaviest it's not the lightest but yeah can't really tell the weight The tank is shaped really nicely to the shape of your body, kind of where your, your legs are going to sit. Uh, the tank's not the biggest, only holding 17 litres, and it's your typical Ducati sports bike problem where they don't have a fuel gauge. Just a fuel light. What a pain in the jabs are. Vibration wise, there's a little bit coming through the handlebars, but actually overall it's not too bad. Not really anything coming through the pegs or uh, the seat, especially at these lower speeds. I'll take note of next time I'm going a little bit faster, because sometimes after you win, uh, when you start getting a little bit more spirited and you start getting the revs higher, that's when you get the potential chance of the old vibrations kicking in. So it moves all right. It's just in that banking over sense that's when it's a little bit sluggish and then then drops slow speed handling kind of getting around the potholes and just flipping around it's all right a lot of heat in the crotch area now actually Ducatis don't like to go slow particularly i'm gonna go find somewhere to pull over so we can have a walk around and do a little sound test for this bike here we go then managed to pull over this v2 is exactly like the v4 fantastic bikes but super aggressive uncomfortable get extremely hot between the legs 
Like I've just been stuck going through a village uh, doing 20, 30 miles an hour and my legs feel like they're on fire. These bikes may be fantastic on track or in foreign countries where you can go faster and so you can kind of keep a little uh, bit of air flow around the bike, but UK, not quite sure where, where it sits in the market. Uh, the other day I did take out the Street Fighter V2 uh, and that bike was so much nicer than this. It was comfortable, it was easier to ride. Uh, over the V4 Street Fighter, it's more manageable. Between this and the Street Fighter V2, 100% I would be picking at the Street Fighter. I love the fact that Ducati have brought down the styling and the looks from the V4 into the V2. Like I said when I was riding, the way that they've sunken all the lights and it's just all tucked away and it's neat and it's just... Ugh. Ducati, they know how to make a bike look bloody delightful, don't they? This being the white trim, we do have those red wheels and then some of the red accents throughout. I like it, it does look nice, but like I said, for me personally, I'm going for either the red or the black. Coming towards the rear, we do have a single-sided swing arm. <laughs> Any bike that's got a single-sided just looks better, in my opinion. Ducati may claim that they've wrapped the exhaust around the engine, uh, but that is why my legs are getting hot. It's the same on the V4. I think Ducati are attempting to have the longest number plate holder in history. They're doing well so far. Well, that's enough waffling off the bike. I'm gonna jump back on it, warm up the derriere because, you know, clearly it's a little bit cold today. Uh, I'm gonna drop this bad boy off. Oh, here we go then, back on the bike. Seat height, 840 mil, my arm 61. And both feet flat on the floor, slight bend in the knees. Like I said, 200 kilos. You can easily kind of maneuver it around uh, between your legs. When it kind of gets like four and a half, five thousand uh, RPM, ah, this is when it just kind of the sound of the exhaust just comes alive just a little bit more. So, what's my thoughts on this bike? I think it's a lot of money, 17 grand, for something that's, let's, let's put it out there, fairly uncomfortable, aggressive to ride. I wouldn't want to do any touring on this. This is the type of bike that would sit in my garage until there's a few days like this where it comes out but then I take it out, it burns my legs, I remember why I left it in the garage and I go and put it back in. Like I said, if I had a pick between this and the Street Fighter V2, Street Fighter all day long, more comfortable. It's just the naked, naked bike is 100% the way forward for the UK roads. Sports bikes, the days are dwindling. And if you're taking this on track then maybe, but me personally I'm too big for this, I'd have to try and change the peg position not sure what I'd be able to do with the uh, the handlebar position looking at Ducati's lineup that is potentially where the Super Sport 950 might have a, a little bit of a place to play in this because looks wise it looks very similar to this Panigale but it's got clip-ons uh, and a lower seat height and potentially more comfortable the price is a little bit cheaper compared to this Panigale V2 but there are there are different engines in it that one's got the I believe like the Testa Strata engine what you got in the Multistrada V2 Desert X etc so you know what I think I'm going to take this one back and I'm going to go and jump on the 950 S I'll do a review on that and I'll, I'll see which I think which I prefer between that and this obviously if you want the out and out Panigale fill then you need to come with this but could the Super Sport give you the comfort that you need on a bike like this I'll find out obviously to see that video you got to subscribe help our channel keep growing we are getting there every day pushing a little bit more It's easy to go quick on this bike. Very, very easy. Uh, let's go and have a little blast along the uh, the faster section. Heat's already kicking back into my legs. Uh. Oh, the UK villages when they're 20 and 30 miles an hour. 
This bike is not designed for them. More than enough power just to get around people. What is it about the quick shifter? Going fast. Absolutely no dramas with it. Very minimal kind of body lag. There we go ladies and gents, that has been my full riding review of the Panigale V2 for 2023. If you've enjoyed it or found it useful, give it a thumbs up, more importantly subscribe to the channel. We have got videos coming out weekly and until the next one, ride safe.